Okay, well, I still don't have my camera guy and the sound still sucks here, but the lighting is really good right now. It's twilight, so we're gonna do this video on my computer cam summarizing today's announcement from Microsoft of their new AI-powered Bing and their new Edge browser, all of it using artificial intelligence. So here's what they announced. I'm gonna break down this hour-long event that was not live streamed. It was held for about 70 to 100 journalists, many of which live blog the event We've combed through all of them, and I'm going to try to distill this in under 10 minutes as to what was announced, what it means, what it doesn't mean, and then some of the fights to keep an eye out for in the near-term future. Okay, so what did they announce? First of all, everyone thought there was going to be the new version of ChatGPT. That is not coming out, at least today. I'm sure it will soon, which means what powers ChatGPT, something called GPT 3.5. Everyone thought it was going to announce GPT 4. They didn't do that. What they did say is that their new search engine is going to use artificial intelligence, the same that powers ChatGPT, except a new next generation version of it. So it's not GPT-4, but it's somewhere better than 3.5. Let's call it GPT, I don't know, 3.8. Anyway, the AI they're using is actually more advanced than what's in ChatGPT. That you should know off the bat. Okay, so they're gonna have a new AI powered Bing search. What does that mean? It means you are now going to be able to have a chat bot right alongside your search results. And it's going to do four things. It's going to search, it's going to answer questions, it's going to chat with you, and it's going to cre help you create. All things that chat GPT sort of does now, but it doesn't have that real-time search component built in. Let's dive into each of those individually. The search portion. So Bing is already a search engine. As you know, nobody uses it because Google is ultimately better. And it's kind of a commodity tool at this point, so everyone just goes to Google. They're going to add in AI-powered search, which Google is also doing with BARD. What does that mean? So Microsoft says that about 40 to 50% of search queries do not return the result that somebody actually wants. And 40% of people just click back and look for a new result. People have the most success when they use three keywords or less. For example, if I search best iPhone case, I would probably find what I'm looking for because there are dozens, if not hundreds of articles about the best iPhone case. But if I modified that and made it a long tail search term, like best iPhone case for kids to take to school and that can also get wet, that is probably not an article that's been written. So how would I determine what that best case is? Well, I'd put that search in and then I would probably read a number of articles to talk about maybe the best case. And then I'd perform a new, new search for the cheapest case because I'm gonna give this to a kid. And then I'd perform a new search for best waterproof iPhone cases and see if any one fits two or three of those categories. What the new AI powered search will do is it will help you with those longer tail, more specific queries, piece together a number of different actual searches that it will perform in real time on your behalf to give you an answer instantly. Really cool stuff. And my guess is Google is going to announce something similar with BARD tomorrow, Wednesday, February 8th. It may have already happened by the time you're watching this. But it's a really interesting way to think about search. Now, here's where things get, you know, good for the user, bad for publishers. Google will show you the individual searches they use to do this for you, which is great because you can then go more in depth if you want to know more about any specific part of the topic. It's also like a good search coach, I guess. They will also cite the information. So there will be, uh, I guess, like footnotes, and then there will be links at the bottom of the result that says learn more. So they're actually gonna tell you, unlike the current AI chatbots and ChatGPT, which don't tell you where they get the info from, the new AI-powered Bing is now gonna tell you, hey, these are the sites we use to arrive at this answer. Cool, that's great if you wanna go click those links and read more, but this opens up a giant and potentially giant legal fight between publishers, and AI and big tech. Because if you're a publisher, you want somebody to come to your website because that's how you make money. You have advertising, you have affiliate ads, uh, you have subscriptions. If Google, and, or excuse me, Microsoft or Google, takes the information from your site and just pushes it to the top of the search result and less people click, you're not gonna be happy about that. So you're going to probably see huge, you've already seen pushback in years prior. Yelp got really mad at Google for sort of doing their own reviews and curating them and putting them at the top and no one had to go to Yelp anymore. You're going to see that on steroids and that's going to happen big time over the next three to six months. Lots of copyright and fair use lawsuits against big tech for doing this. I guarantee it. However, the flip side of this is you may see a whole new world in SEO, search engine optimization 
where publishers try to optimize the content on their sites to feed the AI so they get these citation links because that's going to be the thing that drives traffic in the near term. And in fact, some of the examples that Microsoft used showed a lot of citations from a site like Forbes. Forbes really isn't the authority on anything, but it's like super well SEO optimized. So much so that people will actually pay to be a part of their contributor network to write about their product or their industry because it's really good for their brand. It shows up in Google. It has good backlink authority to help grow their website. So Forbes is already really well optimized and it seems that whatever's happening with the AI here likes sites like that and is using them for citations. Do publishers like that? I don't know. It might be a way to get traffic. It might be a way to lose traffic, but the cat is out of the bag now and it's gonna happen one way or another. So really interesting legal and SEO fights coming up soon. For the user though, really interesting stuff because you can skip an hour's worth of research and have the AI do it for you instantly and then it will even show you how you did it. So that's search and that's really the answering question portion. They're kind of one and the same. Normal search and then this more in-depth search that it's gonna give you an answer for. Three, it will chat with you. So there's a chat bot built right into Bing now, which means when you get a result, you can ask it to refine it. You could say, show me prices, show me something else. The same functionality that you see in ChatGPT will be built right into Bing now, with the exception, and this is notable, is that it will include real-time information. ChatGPT is currently only trained through 2021, so the new AI-powered Bing ostensibly will have real-time info. Google talked about this being their competitive advantage yesterday when they teased an announcement of their AI, Bard. Video link somewhere around here, just click the channel, go, go watch it, whatever. Um, Google already teased this, so Microsoft is caught up and it looks like ChatGPT has entered the, uh, the real-time era. Fourth, this thing will help you create. Just like ChatGPT, you can create blog posts, a social post, whatever. All right, so let's get to Edge. Edge is Microsoft's browser. I don't know if anybody uses it. I couldn't even have told you the name of it before today. I would have to think about it. But it's a desktop and mobile app, which means AI and, will, and AI and the new Bing will be built right into it, which means when you use it, and this is really interesting, and you're on a website that's, let's say it's a research paper and it's 5,000 words, and it's a study about the impact of, I don't know, like milk on toddlers, right? It's something like that. And you, as a parent, might really want to know the result of that paper, but A, you don't have the time or willingness to read 5,000 words, and frankly, it's a scientific paper and you probably can't even understand it. You can now, in the browser, say, hey, summarize this for me like I'm an eighth grader. And because it's built into the browser, you will be able to take what is on a web page and distill it into tables and lists of data and short summaries. You could do this now with ChatGPT, but you have to copy everything and drop it in and remove the ads, and it's a bit of a process. This will now be built right into the Microsoft Edge browser, which is really cool. What's more is the browser is available on mobile, which means we now have a mobile-powered AI chatbot and internet surfing companion that is an app, and that's kind of like the first of its kind. What this really means is that all of these tools that have come out, these Chrome extensions over the last two to three months that sort of help you do this and they'll apply AI to the web page of reason, they're done. They're out of business. If they had a business, they're done because this is now built into uh, Microsoft's browser. Google's almost going to certainly build it into Chrome, which is the leading browser, and you know the cat's out of the bag. So that's a really interesting use case. Um, so that's kind of it. You know, so to summarize, Microsoft announced an updated version of ChatGPT, the technology that is used for ChatGPT. Uh, it's not quite GPT-4, but it's better than what's out there. So I don't know, it might just be a naming thing, but it's, it's the most advanced we've seen so far. Um, two, they announced a new search engine. Three, they announced a new browser. All these are gonna have AI sitting alongside search results with the ability to chat with you. It is available starting today. If you join a wait list, you can jump ahead in that wait list. If you scan a QR code and show it that you make Edge and Microsoft products like your default browser, actually really interesting growth hack from them. Uh, I didn't do it because I'm not ready to like go all in on Edge, but that is one way to get ahead on the wait list. You can go to bing.com slash new to access this. Uh, and then some people, including the reporters and media people in attendance, have early access. So like Google, trusted testers are being allowed in first. Who that is, who the hell knows. But this is being released to the world in the coming weeks. So you're going to be able to use this and soon. Um, 
My thoughts are the following. Both this announcement and Google's sort of dual announcement on yesterday and tomorrow are really focusing on how AI impacts search. And as I think I've talked about here in the video and certainly in our newsletter, if you haven't subscribed, go to smokingrobot.ai, subscribe to our newsletter, you're gonna love it. Three times a week, we bring you the latest in AI, easy to read, fun, entertaining, irreverent, irreverent snarky, smokingrobot.ai. But I've talked a lot about this before. I don't think AI is just about search. That is such a small piece of what AI can do today. And because it sort of looks like a search field on chat GPT, and because the companies behind this are search companies or have a search component, it's an easy and obvious place to, you know, way to use AI. But so much of what is promising about AI is its ability to create, to create code, to create content, to distill, um, uh, you know, information to make workflows more simple, to potentially do your taxes for you, uh, help you generate a profit and loss for your small business. There are so many things that it could do, so many tasks that it can, it, it can perform, not just creating web content, quickly and optimize and automate so many jobs. Search is just a small piece of that. So I think this is just the tip of the iceberg and Microsoft and Google have a lot more in store but I am kind of disappointed that all of the early focus is on making it easier for people to get information. I would rather the big wow, the big wow thing with ChatGPT is like, hey, it can create a recipe for you. And certainly the new Bing can do that. It can create a blog post, but it could also help you like come up with a workout plan. And it's gonna be able to automate so many things you might do on your computer. Like I'd rather see the focus more there than search, but here we are. I think, again, tip of the iceberg. So uh, really interesting announcement. Is Microsoft gonna have a leg up? I don't know. Google's gonna have their announcement tomorrow. They're gonna to talk more about BARD. And if BARD does largely the same things that uh, the new Bing do, and it's built into Chrome, then Google's probably gonna have the advantage there. Because you know most people prefer Chrome at this point, and you're not gonna switch browsers if the functionality is basically the same. You're still gonna trust Google more for search than you will for Microsoft for a very long time, I presume. Now, if Google doesn't meet this standard, and they just release a search, improve search, or just a chatbot, and Microsoft had this more thoughtful combination with OpenAI and ChatGPT, then, um, then yeah, maybe we're all using the uh, Edge browser and Bing, which is, you know, if you would have asked me like two years ago, is that on my 2023 bingo card? I would have said no. Anyway, that's the announcement. New search, AI powered, coming from Microsoft with Bing, new Edge browser, all of this built in. Well, is it enough to get you to switch to Edge? Is it enough to get you to use Bing to search? Let me know down in the comments. Give a thumbs up. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We're trying to do a video every weekday. And whatever you do, go to smokingrobot.ai. You'll get your AI news written by our team three times a week. Fun, entertaining, informative. Smokingrobot.ai. Give us your email. Thanks for watching.